This is the head-to-head -head review between the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i and the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i. Now, I really like what Lenovo is doing with their lineups this year. They're really shaking things up, providing more value by really delineating the differences between each of the laptops. So you have the Pro series that all looks the same as you move through it. Now, I would consider the Lenovo Legion Lock to be kind of the entry level, then the Lenovo Legion Pro 5, then the Lenovo Legion Pro 7. And then we have on the slim side, we have the Lenovo Slim Pro series, then the Lenovo Legion Slim 5, then the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. Now, last year, the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 and the Lenovo, uh, Lenovo Legion uh, 7 Pro, they've switched the names as well on some of the laptops, we're more closely aligned in their general appearance. I was actually packing up the 2022 models and I found that like I was almost confused on which one I was putting away if I held them separately. Now, as soon as I put them right next to each other, you could definitely see the thinness of the Lenovo Legion 7, the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 versus the Lenovo Legion 7 Pro. And so I'm really glad that this year they've defined some stronger differences between the two models. So let's go ahead and check out the build quality first and foremost. We have an aluminum top cover, bottom cover, side panels, as well as keyboard deck. So these are all aluminum built. However, I will say the one downside actually to going to the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i is they've put a plastic bezel around the backside of the chassis. Whereas when you get the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, you get all aluminum bezel around the side panel, all the way around, ports, everything. And so for me, the more premium laptop actually ends up being the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i. Now, I will say once we get into the performance benchmarks, the more premium performance laptop is going to be the Pro 7i. It has an i9, 13900HX processor versus an i9-13900H processor in the Slim 7. So you're going to get a little bit more multitasking performance, and I'll show you that in the full benchmarks in just a little bit in this video. Now, in regards to the ports, on the left side panel, we have USB Type-C and USB Type-A on the Pro 7i, and we have just USB Type-Cs and a headphone jack on the Slim 7i. Now as we flip it over, we have an SD card reader and a manual cutoff switch for the webcam. And then we have a headphone jack and a USB type A for the Pro 7. So if you're an on the go photographer or a video editor using SD cards, this could be a really nice feature for you. You don't have to bring any dongles along. You got the connectivity right there, good to go. And just right there, you can see kind of the thickness difference between the two laptops. The Slim is substantially slimmer. Now going ahead and looking at the back of the chassis, we have three USB type A's on the Slim 7i, our power adapter and HDMI. For this Pro 7i, we have network port, USB-C, three USB-A, and an HDMI as well. So connectivity is fairly close, um, just uh, except for, you know, you have the network port on the Pro versus the SD card reader on the Slim. All right, let's go ahead and check the weight and thickness, pulling that up on the screen for you so you can see we have the Pro 7i and the Slim 7i. And it definitely is almost the same weight, but the thickness winner, the thinner laptop goes to the Slim 7i. Now let's go ahead and flip these over so you can actually look at the assembly. This is the Pro 7i, and you can see there's a little bit of an edge sticking out here, but it's not catchy. It's just that the bottom cover fits into the side panel uh, and kind of sinks a little bit deeper than the actual edge. However, as we move to the back side here, all the edges are put so well together for these laptops. One thing I really like this year about the Pro Series is they don't have it to where you take the laptop apart anymore, where this whole back section needs to come off. And so you pull off like all these like port holes, um, only the bottom cover now comes off. That is amazing for upgrading these laptops because that was one thing I was always, really hesitant to take apart the Pro Series from 2022 because they were so janky to pull off. I was always like afraid I was gonna break them because you actually even had to pull these vent pieces off. Um, that's no longer the case in 2023, love that. All right, looking at the Slim 7i, um, you can see again, that same kind of sitting in deeper to the side panel uh, compared to just aligning flush. Uh, Asus, uh, Asus, Asus, gosh, everybody says it differently. I always say it wrong, of course. Um, it, 
they kind of snug them up a little better, I think. So as far as like the assembly and snugging the bottom cover into the side panel, I think Asus does it better. But I don't think Lenovo does it bad. Um, they have decided to kind of sink them in a little bit, which I think is, you know, choice. Uh, but it's all assembled very well. But I love this build. Oh, it's so nice, so sturdy. Um, it does have gamer vibes, but it isn't like gamer-fied with like big chunky you know, vents and ah, it's just beautiful. It's it's one of my favorites. If I was gonna buy a 16 inch laptop, uh, Windows-based 16 inch laptop, you gotta believe it would be it would be this one or the X ah oh, or the X16. I love the X16 too, but. Uh, it's too close. I can't wait to get an X16 from 2023 to check it out and put it against this one. I don't have one yet, but I will. All right, next let's go ahead and do a little open and close on the lid. Because these laptops have nice weight to them, they open and close very easily with one hand. These do have some flexi screens, if that's a concern to you. It's never a concern to me, but I always do that because some people... Uh, feel it is a concern. Now, one little nice touch on the top here, there actually is a Legion logo on the Slim 7i. Um, let's see if you can even see that. I don't know, it's right there in the middle of the screen. And there's not one on the Pro 7i. So it's it's weird because last year's Pro or 7 Pro really had a lot of like premium touches. Now this still has the RGB, but it just, it, it came with the aluminum you know, band. It had this Legion touch. The logo glowed on the outside. It just, it felt a tad more premium than the Pro 7 from this year. Now the Pro 7 from this year has premium performance. And we'll show you that again in just a minute, but it doesn't exactly have that premium feel to it that the Slim carried on to 2023. So if you're looking for that premium Legion series laptop, the Slim 7 is the way to go in my personal opinion. So you even have the, the little logos that light up for the, um, ports this is the seven those lit up last year and they don't this year so there's like little touches that i'm noticing that i wish they would have carried into 2023 for us all right let's go ahead and check out the keyboards real quickly now one thing i really do prefer uh for the uh pro versus the slim is the keyboard on the pro i wish they would have just given us this keyboard over here. Cause this is more, it feels a little more plasticky. Um, the key press is fine. It's a more of a medium key press. This is more of a medium to long key press from the feeling. Um, and the keys are gonna feel a tiny bit softer. And so I just like the black keys. I like the aesthetic. Um, the color really shows through nicely on the black keys. Um, let's see if I can, yeah. So this, you know, we do have RGB lighting here and the color just doesn't show through as rich. Um, so I really prefer the keyboard on the Pro 7i compared to the Slim 7. Now, both of the trackpads feel the exact same. They have the same trackpad. Size is going to be the same. So you don't have really any concerns with getting the right trackpad. Both are the exact same. Now, if you're curious about how it sounds when using the keyboard and trackpad, here's a little audio sample for you. Also, if you want to know what the speakers sound like, here's a sample of the speakers in use as well. And they both, of course, have webcams on the top bezel of the screen. Here's a sample of the webcam. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing of the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i and the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. One of the big defining differences for a lot of people from a performance standpoint is is going to be the upgrade path. For the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i, you can only upgrade one RAM stick. 
For the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i, you have access to two RAM sticks. Now, both laptops have access to two M.2 drives. So you can upgrade the storage equally, but as far as RAM is concerned, that's not an equal opportunity RAM upgrade. So definitely consider the fact that you can upgrade the Pro further. Now, in regards to the panels, they are extremely similar, if not the exact same. I'm thinking the differences between the results are simply just panel to panel situation where they can't all be calibrated perfectly the same way. But you can see the results coming up on the screen right now and they are so close. Nice bright screens, color accurate, and good color gamut range, especially for the price point of these laptops. I mean, you're getting premium components, premium performance, premium build quality, and it's amazing that the price of these laptops, where they come in at, it's just Lenovo is really doing something great here with these Legion laptops. Now, if you are looking for battery life, then my goodness, look no further than the Legion Slim. Much better battery life than the Pro 7i. I was able to flick them both into iGPU mode, put them at 60 hertz refresh rate on the screen, 20% screen brightness, both on iGPU mode and, um, quiet mode and that's how i was able to get those battery life results now keep in mind i'm turning off the gpu so you're not going to have much gpu performance when getting these battery lives but for me i like to have better battery life on the go and then i can get where i'm going plug in and do some heavy video editing or 3d modeling or whatever i'm working on that needs more gpu performance but i love to see how much battery life i can get on these laptops on igpu mode and you're definitely gonna to wanna to go with the Slim 7i. Now, results, of course, may vary. I you know, have a very specific test where I'm able to get the best battery life results possible. Um, I've seen where, you know, if I'm using it on the day-to-day -day and not really paying attention to my brightness, I will probably burn through my battery a little quicker. Um, but when I am running my tests, I'm going for optimal, most battery life possible. So just always keep that in mind. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the performance benchmarks to help you finalize your decision between the Pro and the Slim. First and foremost, taking a look at Geekbench single core and multi core. You can see they're basically neck and neck for single core, a hundred or so points away. But as soon as we get into multi core, you see them spread out quite a bit. And that's why I was saying that HX processor in the Pro 7i is definitely going to be great for multitasking. If you're somebody who uses six to 10 apps at a time, you're definitely going to want to go for the Pro 7i. If you're more, less of a multitasker, you know, two, three, four apps open at a time, then you'll be fine on the Slim 7 because it's got great single core performance. Looking at Cinebench R23, we see that same result reflected from single core into multi-core. Great single core lining up very closely, but then you go into multi-core and that spreads out quite a lot. Uh, almost 10,000 points difference between the Pro 7i and the Slim 7i. So definitely keep that in mind if you're a big multitasker. Now going on to the real world benchmarks, which is what I like most, you can see in Photoshop, the Pro 7i scored a 1,229 and the Slim 7i was able to score a 983. Now do keep in mind, I ran these laptops at their stock configuration, how they came to me from Lenovo. So on the Pro 7i, we have 32 gigs of RAM. On the Slim 7i, we have 16 gigs of RAM. If you were to upgrade that one RAM stick to say 16, you would then have 24. Remember there's eight gigs soldered and there's eight gigs in the channel. If I switched out that eight gigs, Put in a 16, I'd then have 24. I'm guessing I would have around the mid thousands. So maybe 1,075, maybe in the uh, 1,100 range. Um, I'm guessing that could pop it up a little bit. So this would be worth an upgrade to grab an extra, six, grab an extra, grab us, buy a 16 gig stick and put it in there to get a little bit more performance inside of Photoshop. And moving on to After Effects, very similar situation we're seeing there. We're seeing a 995 out of the Pro 7i versus a 798 out of the Slim 7i. After Effects loves RAM almost more than Photoshop. So keep in mind, if you wanna get more ceiling, put a 16 or 32 gig stick in that uh, that swappable RAM slot, and that will really do you well for After Effects and Photoshop. All right, moving on to Blender Classroom. Blender Classroom was one that surprised me. We actually saw better results out of the Slim 7i compared to the Pro 7i, only about 20 points, but it was it was cool to see that the Slim 7i was showing off really good. Uh, now, for Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, 
and PTC Creo, they kind of swap back and forth who's gonna be up on top. Now the difference is not dramatic um, because we do have i9 processors, we do have RTX 4070s in both of these laptops and RAM does not create as big of a difference in the 3D modeling softwares as much as it does in Photoshop and After Effects. Now you definitely want a good amount of RAM for 3D modeling because as you add multitasking, as you're adding more uh, layers and you're opening more programs, that's where you're gonna want more RAM so you don't bottleneck your system just simply because you didn't have enough RAM. But keep in mind for the singular test that we're seeing here, it is not as um, affected. Okay, now going ahead and looking at SolidWorks. This is an area where I really wouldn't recommend any of these like Yes, these are diehard best SOLIDWORKS laptops you money can buy. However, they're getting good scores for GeForce GPUs. Now I say it every time in one of my videos, if you want great performance in SOLIDWORKS, get a workstation NVIDIA GPU, like an A3000, A5000, even A2000. These are certified GPUs for SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS uh, is best used with workstation certified GPUs. Or if you're on a budget, Radeon GPUs, like the RX 6700S or the RX 6800S. I do full videos about the best laptops for 3D modeling. Definitely check those out if you want to get my opinion on the best bang for buck laptops for SOLIDWORKS. So just keep that in mind. These are good laptops for SOLIDWORKS, but not the best. Um, as you can see, one of the best bang for bucks is going to be the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 from 2022 with the RX 6700S. Or the Lenovo Legion Slim AMD, oh, you gotta check this out. The Lenovo Legion Slim AMD right now is on sale. Uh, I think I saw it on Best Buy for like $12.99, which is bonkers because I think that laptop was like $19.99 new. So it's like almost $600 off right now. So definitely check the links in the description below. I will link that up. And if I forget to link it up, somebody comment. Uh, and I hope it's still on sale when you watch this video because I was like, dang, that's an amazing sale. All right, moving on to Premiere Pro Playback. Zero drop frames for 6K B-Raw and 6K Red footage out of the Pro 7i. Fantastic, and I even ran some 8K playback and saw really good results for 8K, crazy. Now checking out the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i, I was a little disappointed. I thought RTX 4070, uh, i9-13900H, and we're still dropping around 1300 frames in B-RAW and 368 in red footage. And I ran this test multiple times as I do for all my laptops, just trying to get that, that playback down, and I just couldn't seem to do it. Um, so for whatever reason, it just wasn't as I hoped, whatever it would be the thin chassis, thermal management, I'm not quite sure. It's still very usable. It's still gonna be a great 6K video editing laptop. I know most of you are shooting either 1080p or 4K, but if you happen to be doing 6K, it, it will still work well. But if you need to know it's gonna do well and it's gonna perform well, it's gonna have smooth playback, then I would go for the Pro, personally, just so I don't have that concern that I'm gonna have dropped frames and I'm gonna have a jumpy ex uh, editing experience inside of Premiere Pro. Now, in regards to the export times, Pro 7i, killer score, two minutes and 17 seconds, versus the Slim 7i, still a great score at two minutes and 29 seconds for 4K export. That is a nine minute 4K clip placed in Premiere Pro and edited out at full quality 4K YouTube settings. Now, looking at 6K, uh, we have an 11 minute and 43 second export time. That is 6K nine minute clip exported out at full quality 6K resolution really fast. That is one of the fastest times I've seen on my channel. And then we have for the Slim 7i, 17 minutes and 53 seconds. Eh, that's that's quite a bit slower, seven minutes slower. So if you're 6K video editing, I'd go for the Pro 7i personally. Now looking at DaVinci Resolve, three minutes and 55 seconds out of the Pro 7i, four minutes and 21 seconds out of the Slim 7i, almost the same in my opinion, like less than 30 seconds apart. So DaVinci Resolve will work great for both of these laptops. Now, punch for punch, as I'm going through this video, if you want to dominate in regards to performance, you can see that the clear choice is the Pro 7i. It just handles everything very well from multitasking, 6K video editing, 3D modeling. It just has the most consistent performance where one of the, you know, you're not hitting like one specific uh, creator task and it's like, oop, it dropped a little bit there. That's kind of what it seems like the Pro 7i does because it's slimmer form factor, thermal management, it just seems to be throttling in certain areas. Also, you have one RAM soldered and one RAM swappable, so that doesn't allow as much of an upgrade path. So though the premium laptop from 2023 from Legion, to me, seems to be the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i, if you're running powerhouse of performance, I would go for the Pro 7i. And you get an SD card reader for the Slim 7, that's pretty awesome as well. Depends on what you want. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you here in the next one.